Well, good evening again. It's 153greatfish.website, and we're going to continue our Kickstarter uh, series in the beginning. We're going to talk tonight again about the geography of Paul. Recall last session we gave a brief introduction about the geography of Paul, but now we're going to get into the missionary journeys of Paul, three missionary journeys to be specific. And if we have time tonight, we'll talk about uh, journeys one and two, and then next week we'll talk about journey three. But let's begin with prayer, shall we? Jesus, we love you, Lord. We praise you. And Lord, we just ask you to be with us tonight during this Bible study. Lord, I pray, anoint our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, let's begin with uh, this slide here, the first missionary journey of Paul. It's found in the book of Acts, from Acts chapter 13, 4 through 52, uh, through Acts chapter 14, 1 through 25. You can carve that section out this week and read missionary uh, journey number one. The timeline is 46 AD to 48 AD. This is a two-year journey for Paul. He's 38 years old. This is 10 years after his road to Damascus experience where he was blinded by the light. Now the team, the missionary team, is going to consist of three guys, uh, Paul and Barnabas, who began their uh, journey from Antioch, the church, the Gentile church in Antioch, and they took along uh, Peter's nephew, John Mark, which was uh, uh, relative of Barnabas as well. The total distance of their missionary journey is 1,600 miles over the course of two years. And of course, the theme of this journey is that they want to take the methods that they learned at the Gentile Church of Antioch and apply them to Gentiles uh, that they're going to meet along the way as well as Jews. So here's where they went, and I'm going to go through all these cities. Uh, then we'll take a look at the map that demonstrates these locations. In the late spring of 46 AD, the brothers, Acts 13, 1 through 3, they ordained Paul and Barnabas as missionaries. And from Antioch, the two apostles uh, took along John Mark. They began the first missionary journey. Now, Paul and his company first traveled to Seleucia, which, uh, and then they sailed to Salamis. They went to the Mediterranean, the principal city and seaport of the island of Cyprus. Cyprus is where Barnabas was born and he was raised. We find that in Acts 4, verse 36. In Salamis, they preach the gospel in several synagogues. They then walk across the island by foot and arrive at Paphos on the other side of the island. While in Paphos, the island, uh, the Roman governor, uh, Paphos, the city on, the, on um, the island, they run into the Roman governor who requests that the missionaries meet with him so he can personally hear the word of God. And uh, along with the governor is a sorcerer. We learned that the guy's name is Elimus, the sorcerer, the magician. And Elimus resists the gospel and tries to prevent the governor from converting. This is found in Acts 13, 6 through 8. So Paul perceives that Elimus is, uh, has demonic attentions and uh, he speaks against the sorcerer and immediately the sorcerer goes blind. Elimus goes blind. He's unable to see for a period of time. The governor is astonished when he perceives the, the power of the gospel. So Seleucius was one of Alexander the Great's four generals who helped him conquer most of the known uh, world around the Mediterranean. He founded Antioch and Seleucia there in Syria. Now, 12 years after Alexander's death, uh, Seleucius, he took control over the eastern part of the empire, that would be Asia Minor, Babylon, and Syria. And uh, he established his own dynasty, which lasted until 65 BC. The Apostle Paul, Barnabas Mark, soon get on a ship and they are on their way to uh, Perga. And uh, Mark then abruptly leaves the group and returns to Jerusalem, and that upsets Paul. The issue of Mark uh, abandoning the missionary journey is one of the reasons why Paul and Barnabas get into an argument later on the second missionary journey. So uh, Paul and Barnabas leave Perga, and they travel to Antioch in Pisidia. Now, notice that this is a second Antioch. There's an Antioch of Syria, there's an Antioch of Pisidia. In fact, Seleucus, the uh, empire creator, his father's name was Antiochus, he named 16 cities after his father. And uh, we need to understand that's a different Antioch than the one in Syria. So in Antioch, the missionaries find a, a synagogue. Paul preaches a message in Acts 13, 16 through 41. And he splits the synagogue. And uh, some of the Jews leave and some of the Gentile uh, proselytes I uh, asked Paul to continue speaking the next Sabbath day, which is a Saturday. Then after the, they get all kicked out of the synagogue, uh, they follow Paul and Barnabas in order to hear more of the gospel. 
on the, uh, what would appear to be the third Sabbath. The entire city comes to hear the word of God, Acts 13, 42 through 44. The Jews, however, are envious of the large crowd. They begin to speak against the gospel and uh, what's going on with at Paul and Barnabas' hands. And uh, so now Paul and Barnabas will only speak to the Gentiles. That's Acts 13, 45 through 47. As the word of the Lord increases through the entire region, some Jews begin a campaign uh, to convince the most noble people, the elite of the city, to be against Paul and Barnabas. Persecution breaks out, and uh, they, uh, they got to leave. And so they head to Iconium, and again, they do the same process. They go to the local synagogue. Paul preaches, convinces many Jews and Greeks to become believers, and then uh, those who uh, do not believe uh, stir up others and create trouble for them, and persecution begins. And, and in this particular location, Paul performed signs and wonders to confirm what he said. And in a short time, the Jewish leaders with other Jews and Gentiles conspired to have these guys stoned and put to death. And uh, discovering a threat to their lives, they flee to Lystra. In Lystra, Paul meets a man who is born and crippled, never able to walk. He perceives that the man uh, is going to listen to his message, and he has faith in God. He gets that through the word of faith, and then Paul commands the crippled man to be healed and stand up, and he's able to walk. This is in Acts 14, 6 through 10. There's such an overwhelming response to this uh, wonder, this miracle, because it's unexpected. And so uh, they, they want to make gods out of Paul and Barnabas. And Paul and Barnabas say, hey, we're just men uh, like you. And they tear their clothes in repentance, a Jewish custom. And uh, they're barely able to keep the crowds from sacrificing to them. This is Acts 14, 14 through 18. In a short period of time, the Jews from uh, Antioch, Pisidium, and Iconium arrive in Lystra, and they succeed in turning people against the two evangelists. Uh, but we know that this church succeeds because it's here in Lystra that uh, Paul will meet Timothy, a convert that occurs after he leaves. So now they stone both Paul and Barnabas in Lystra. They drag what they think is Paul's dead body out of the city, uh, and Paul all of a sudden comes back to life, stands up. <laughs> it's amazing. He goes back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas travel to Derby, which is nearby. This is found in Acts 14, 19 through 20. They preach the gospel in Derby. They retrace their steps, going from Lystra back to Iconium, then Antioch uh, Pisidius, in order to strengthen the uh, people they've converted. And then from Antioch Pisidius, they travel to Perga, then, then to Atalia, where they catch, which is a seaport town. They catch a ship and travel back to uh, Syria, where they began their journey, and they conclude their missionary journey, and they uh, take a rest for approximately two years, and you can read about this in Acts 14, uh, 26 through 28. Uh, they skip Cyprus, and of course we see that in Cyprus, Barnabas is going to uh, go ahead and preach, uh, go back there on his own personal second missionary journey. So that's the first missionary journey. Uh, took a little bit of time, so we're ready to begin looking at the second missionary journey and some of the cities. In this journey, they're going to actually get into Europe, and that will be interesting. For this study, we're going to look at Paul's second missionary journey, his second missionary journey. And he's going to take people with him that he did not take before, and he's going to visit some places he has not visited before. He's going to actually journey from Asia Minor, and so we go to uh, these provinces that uh, are familiar to us, the 16 provinces of the Roman Empire in Asia Minor. Skipping down, right down to here, we're going to look at the two provinces of the Roman Empire that are in Europe in the Aegean Sea area. They are Macedonia, which is to the west, Thrace, which is immediately to its right. Think of them as forming uh, just one box of uh, provinces cut in half, one to the east, one to the west. And then Greece is underneath them, south. Greece is also known as Achaia, A-C-H-A-I-A. -A. And of course, the only island that Paul stops at is for one night at Samothracia. And he stops on that on his way to Europe. So here's the second missionary journey. And uh, it's found in the book of Acts, from Acts 15, 36 to 41, going on through to Acts 18, 1 through 22. Recall that this was a journey of three and a half years, 50 AD to 53 AD. Paul is now 42 years old. He's had a two-year rest in Antioch of Syria, along with Barnabas, who has a two-year rest. Uh, Paul goes on to Europe, and Barnabas goes to his home country uh, in Cyprus. 
and uh, they split over the question of John Mark. Now, the team that Paul takes with him is Silas. He meets up with Timothy, who gets converted while Paul is gone in Lystra. And then there's Luke, who joins him in Troas. And two people, tent makers, Basila and Aquila, join up with Paul in Corinth, and they travel with him to Ephesus near the end of his journey. The total journey is 3,100 miles, roughly double the distance of his first missionary journey. Now, his theme is the post-Jerusalem Council Liberty for Gentiles. I see that button's covering that up a little bit. But uh, Paul's going to deliver the liberty rulings from the Jerusalem Council that eliminates you know, uh, dietary uh, cast root law. Uh, it eliminates the uh, holiness code from Leviticus. And uh, he just gives them four laws that they have to keep. Now, these are the provinces and the cities that he's going to go through. Uh, Syria from Antioch. Uh, to Tarsus, which is Paul's home city, uh, to Derby, and it's a pretty long journey in La uh, Laika, Onia. Uh, Derby and Lystra always go together. Iconia, Iconium, which is of Galatia, uh, another Antioch of the Greek Empire. Uh, he's forbidden to enter Western Asia Minor, okay, that's everything to the west, uh, uh, and he's also forbidden to enter Bithynia, that's uh, the uh, area in Western Asia Minor would be Troy of Mycia, that would be the major city, and to Bithynia, to the north, would be Chalcedon, Nicaea, which, uh, uh, which were up to the north. European portion of Paul's second missionary journey, we see that he then goes from Troas, which is an Aegean seaport of Mycia, Western Asia, to Neapolis, which is a Macedonian seaport city near Philippi. Then he goes to Thessala uh, Thessalonica, or Thessaloniki as they pronounce it, and of course he goes through these two cities, Amphipolis and Apollonia, which are uh, not really talked about in scripture other than they're mentioned. Then he goes to the area of Berea in Macedonia, where he does not get in any trouble there, which is why it's mentioned. He then goes on to Athens and uh, Corinth, uh, which is a different island. Athens is way south, and Corinth is a different sort of peninsula of Greece. Then he goes to the seaport of Centuria, and then he goes to Ephesus back to Asia Minor, and from there he goes to Caesarea of Judea and Jerusalem to be at the Feast of Tabernacles. So the Antioch missionaries, uh, Paul and Silas, they have a private meeting with the apostles, James, Peter, and John, about the circumcision question. Uh, Barnabas is part of that. They agree that circumcision is not required for Gentiles. To be saved, the ministry of Paul and Barnabas is confirmed. The circumcision question is discussed further among the conference attendees. And immediately after that, Paul and, uh, and Barnabas split over John Mark. And uh, that's after they return to Antioch. Now, they spend a total of two years in Antioch. And uh, Paul decides to go on a second missionary journey. He's going to take Silas with him. So in 50 AD, Paul goes with Silas to Tarsus. They go by land. And from there, they travel to Derby, then down to uh, Lystra. And they do that on a land bridge. And uh, that's where he meets Timothy, is in Lystra. Timothy's been converted while he's been gone. And Timothy becomes a traveling companion, a fellow laborer in spreading the gospel. And I think Timothy becomes uh, Paul's best friend. You can read about this in Acts 16, 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2, and chapter 4, verse 14. So Paul uh, met Timothy. Uh, who had, as I said, was living in Lystra. Timothy's father was a Greek, a Gentile, and his mother was a Jewess. And uh, because Paul is going to be going to synagogues and splitting those synagogues, he has Timothy get circumcised. He gets his ethnicity from his mother, and that, of course, is still done to this day. You get your Jewishness from your mother. And uh, he accompanies Paul on most of his second missionary journey, and uh, he even served Paul in Ephesus and was with him during his time in the Roman prison. So Timothy's a very faithful servant. So uh, Paul expressed his uh, love and devotion to Timothy as a, as a friend, and he, he praised him for this faithfulness uh, and his relatives as well for supporting uh, Timothy. And uh, he wrote uh, about Timothy uh, right before Paul's death. Paul wrote about him in 2 Timothy. So um, he journeys to the Northwest of Antioch, and he desires to preach the gospel in Western Asia. However, the Holy Ghost forbade him in Acts 16, 6 from going into Asia. That would be the western part of Asia Minor. So they continue to travel north towards the region of Mycia, 
Now, Paul wanted to go uh, north a little bit and east to the province of Bithynia, but again, the Holy Ghost forbade him to do so. This is Acts 16.7. So instead, the group travels to Troas on the Aegean Sea, and it's at Troas that we see that Luke, who wrote the book of Acts and the book of Luke, he becomes a traveling uh, companion of Paul. He joins them. God then gives Paul a vision at Troas of a man in Macedonia begging him to come for, to help him. That's found in Acts 16, 8 through 9. And Paul and his companions immediately get on a ship and they sail to the island of Samothracia. Samothrace, Samothracia. They stay one night. Then they arrive at Neapolis. That's in Acts 16, 10 through 11, the southern city near uh, Philippi. So from Neapolis, they go to Philippi where a woman named Lydia uh, hears Paul's preaching. She gets baptized around Pentecost 51 AD. Her and her entire house, household, Acts 16, 12 through 15. While in Philippi, Paul casts out a demon from a female a girl who has a familiar spirit. And that's found in Acts 16, 16 through 18. Now, her employers got angry about this because they lost the ability to make money off of her, uh, you know, off her, uh, um, uh, I guess I would call it, off of her uh, uh, demonic ministry and uh, her divination. And they stirred up the, the whole city against Paul and Silas, and the two missionaries are arrested. They're beaten, put into prison, Acts 16, 19 through 24. Soon after arriving uh, in jail in Philippi, a miraculous earthquake breaks them out as they're singing praises to God. All the bonds of all the prisoners are loosed. Paul's doors are open. He could have ran, but he didn't. So the event leads to the conversion of the jailer, the Macedonian jailer. So after Paul and Silas are freed, along with Timothy and Luke, they travel through the cities of, of Amphipolis and Apollonia. They arrive in Thessalonica or Thessaloniki. Acts 17.1. There he meets uh, some Jews at the Jewish synagogue, Acts 17.2-4. And although many believe what Paul is preaching on several successive Sabbath days, a riot and a mob forms, Acts 17.4-5. And the crowd goes from to the house to seek Jason of the synagogue, seeking him and Silas. They can't find him. The crowd drags Jason and some of the brothers to the local civil magistrates and they accuse them of wrongdoing, Acts 17.5-8. In a short time, however, Jason and the brothers are let go. They're let go. The Christians are let go. Paul and Silas continue to preach in a synagogue in a nearby town called Berea. Now, the Bereans are not only willing to listen to what they've heard and to what is preached uh, that reveals what the Old Testament scriptures mean. That's, that's found in Acts 17, 11 through 12. But many Bereans come to believe the gospel. But then the Jews from Thessaloniki or Thessalonica, they arrive in the city. And they cause more trouble, Acts 17, 13. Paul immediately leaves for the coast and he sets sail for Athens. And the rest of his party stay in Berea. But in Athens, Paul requests that Timothy and Silas come to him. That's found in Acts 17, 15. So while waiting in Athens for uh, Silas and Timothy, Paul preaches the gospel to Athenian people who, who listen. But of course, they are... Uh, tied up in philosophy. Some are Epicureans, etc. And they believe that the highest aim of man is to seek a life of erite or a pleasant life. The Stoics also listen to him and they believe that man's happiness consists of bringing himself into harmony with nature. After hearing some of Paul's message, the Epicureans and the Stoics take him to the Aragopagus on Mars Hill, as the Romans called it, to further explain what he's teaching. So that's found in Acts 17, 16 through 19. On Mars Hill, Paul uses an altar that he sees dedicated to the unknown God. And this is the God, Jesus Christ, that he preaches to them that this God can be known, Acts 17, 19, 22 through 23. So Paul leaves Athens and he travels to Corinth. And uh, it's at Corinth that he meets Priscilla and Aquila. And uh, since both he and the couple make a living as tent makers, he stays at their house. He preaches the gospel every Sabbath in the synagogue. Silas and Timothy eventually catch up to him in Corinth, Acts 18, 1 through 5. And several Jewish leaders from the local synagogue are converted and the synagogue splits as usual. So a new church is formed. After the split, Paul stays and teaches in Corinth. In the winter of 52 AD, Paul is brought before the judgment seat of Galileo by the Jews. That's found in Acts 18, 12 through 18 but he's immediately released. He remains in Corinth until the spring of 53 AD, and then he travels to the port city of Sencris 
in this city, Paul shaves his head, takes a Nazarite vow, Acts 18, 18, because he's a Jew. He then boards a ship and travels to Ephesus, taking along Priscilla and Aquila. But soon he has to leave, leaving his companions behind. And Paul has taken a vow to be in Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, Acts 18, 19 through 21. Paul then sails from Ephesus to Caesarea, which is when he comes back into the Holy Land. And then soon thereafter, he arrives at Jerusalem. After keeping the Festival of Tabernacles, Paul returns to the Gentile church at Antioch, Syria, Acts 18, 21 through 22. That concludes uh, tonight's uh, study, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again next week when we finish this study with uh, lesson number three on the geography of Paul, part of the Kickstarter In the Beginning uh, series. God bless you and have a good evening.